Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let us see about securing our VPC network by restricting whatever the unnecessary traffic that is coming into this VPC by using a VPC network firewall. In this video, let us see how to do that by using network VPC network firewall option how can we able to restrict unsecure traffic? How can we able to restrict the unsecure traffic by using VPC network firewall? Basically, in this architecture, the request will be sent from client or user from outside of my VPC. Then that request will enter into this internet gateway then that request will be sent to this public subnet from there through the NAT gateway that request will be sent to this private subnet application server then from there the response will be get back to the client in the same way back now what i am expecting i want to check the user request that is whether he is using correct format or whether he is a hacker or he is a unsecure type of a request he is sending, any person is sending unsecure type of request, then I must need to block it, right? Yeah. So that where can I able to check? Here in between, whenever the request enters into my VPC through this internet gateway, then I am expecting to check that traffic is good or not by using specific rules how can we able to check obviously by using specific rules right yeah so here i am expecting to check whether the request is good or not secure or not by validating it with specific rules and then i want to forward that request to public subnet whether that request is correct that is a good otherwise i want to block that request otherwise i want to stop that request without sending any response so in that way i want to do so in aws is there any service to do that yeah so there is a service that is a network firewall you can use it to do to restrict unsecure traffic by specifying some rules here actually in this lab we gonna see how to create our network firewall or you can see in this lab how to provide a rule i will show you the network firewall and related configurations as well and here in between our internet gateway and public subnet i have also created one more public sub subnet for my firewall in this public subnet i will create a route table where in that route table, I'll provide the endpoints that are provided by using this network firewall. So whenever a user hit this internet gateway, then the request first goes to this subnet. So whenever request hits this subnet, then immediately the route table associated with it will check the network firewall related associated rules. So if the rules are accepting the request, then, then only the request will be further passed to this public subnet. Then our request will be further passed to our application through this NAT gateway. Then obviously whenever request passed to our application, it will send the response back to the user, right? Yeah. So here in this lab, let us see how to configure a rule in our network firewall and related configurations to establish this securing traffic by using VPC network firewall by using VPC network firewall. So for this lab, I've already created a internet gateway for us in this VPC A. I want to show you. Now you can see I have already logged into my AWS management console. Now I'm opening the VPC A that I have created to show you the VPC. I'm opening the VPC service in AWS. 
So what are the VPC that I have created that I want to show to you? So you can see in your VPC session, if you open VPCs option, then you can see the VPCs that are available here. So this is the VPC that is VPC A that I have created for us for this lab. In this VPC, I've already created one internet gateway. You can see I'm opening the internet gateways under this VPC dashboard. You can see I have two internet gateways. One is among them, one is a VPC A related internet gateway. This is the gateway I've created for this lab for us. Now I want to show you the subnets as well. You can see I told you I'm using for this lab, I'm using one, two, three, three subnets. Among them, one is for firewall and one is for public subnet and one is for private subnet I'm using. So I want to show you these subnets from VPC dashboard. Now you can see under this subnets tab under our virtual private cloud VPC dashboard under the subnets tab, you can see whatever the subnets that I have previously created for you. You can see these are the subnets that I have previously created for you. That is, you just focus on subnet one. Related to subnet one, you just focus on that. Even now, you can see I applied this filter. That is a subnet one. Ending with subnet one, whatever the subnets are there, those all will be available here, right? Yeah. Now I have created three subnets with these three CIDR blocks starting with 10.1 for us for this lab. Now you can see one is for firewall. This is the firewall related subnet. This is the private subnet. And this is for public subnet, where in this public subnet, I put my NAT gateway. And in this private subnet, I actually put my EC2 servers, where my application servers are in this private subnet. So whenever the request came, first it hits this firewall subnet, then it hits this public subnet through NAT gateway, then the request will be sent to this private subnet. In that private subnet also, the request will be sent back to our application server then. Now I want to show you one more thing that is this network firewall. So this network firewall I have already created. I want to show you that as well and internet gateway as well I want to show you. I have shown you, right? Yeah, internet gateway I have shown. I want to show you this network firewall as well. So for this, I'm moving back to my VPC dashboard. Now I want to show you that network firewall, right? You can see under this VPC dashboard itself, we have an option that is firewalls. If you open the firewalls, then you can see the option that is whatever the firewall that you just created, that you previously created. This is the firewall that I previously created for you for this lab. Uh, right now I'm opening this firewall to see the configurations which are present inside it. You can see for which VPC this firewall is created for this VPC. Already this firewall is associated for this VPC. You just click on it so that our VPC will be open. You can see this is the VPC that is nothing but our VPC A. The associated VPC for this firewall is what? Our VPC A. Now, if you see the firewall related details that I have previously configured. So this is the name that I put for my firewall. And this is the VPC for my firewall. These two are the subnets that I have provided for my firewall. These two are separate subnets. Currently for this lab, I'm specifying only VPC A related subnet, but actually I have two VPCs. So related to two VPCs and related to particular VPC. So actually what happens in real time? Where do we host our application? 
do we host our application only in single availability zone or multiple availability zones we host our application in multiple availability zones so same like this same like this i obviously host this application in another availability zone right yeah so like that i created the environment with hosting my application in two availability zones but to show you the configuration i am just showing the one environment for you that's it so in the firewall configuration i associated with vpc a and i provided my two availability zone subnets one is one a region availability zone subnet two is the availability zone b region subnet since to provide high availability i hosted my application in two availability zones now in this lab i will show you for one availability zone how to provide how to secure my network traffic how to secure my network and you can see so whenever you create this firewall it will generate you two endpoints you can note down these two endpoints so one is a uh, 097c and another one starting with 025 these two we gonna use in next few steps of our lab so just remember these two endpoints because these are the key key things in our vpca in our vpca actually we are using this 09c124 this vpc endpoint in order to route the traffic to this firewall we are using this endpoints okay then i just provided the logging logging to cloud watch related logs to this to this folder under the inception firewall th folder alert folder i have provided the location where my actual logs are stored under this folder okay so these are the configurations and policy settings here you can see under the policy settings you have the stateful rule groups here you have the stateful rule groups here only you can able to provide whatever the required so whatever the required rules that you want to add those you can add here so whenever this network firewall is hit by using request or traffic then these rules will be validated based on all these rules if all these rules will allow then only your request will be forwarded to backside subnet that is this public subnet otherwise from this subnet itself your request will be blocked so yeah that is this stateful rule groups i'll show you how to create this rule group in this lab so let's inspect some more details that is so whenever you create your network firewall so in order to route the traffic from your internet gateway from your internet gateway to this to this firewall public subnet route table you need a route table right you need a route table in order to in order to trigger that or in order to immediately route the traffic whichever the traffic coming to this internet gateway the traffic need to route to this firewall right yeah for that we need a route table that also i have configured i'll show you that route table and to show you before i want to tell you these two things that is uh, these two endpoints i am using in order to route the traffic to this firewall so i am opening the route table in order to show you that uh, route table in a new tab that route table i provided the name as ingress ingress traffic you, you can see ingress route table like this i provided the name now if you observe the routes which are present in it so before that i want to show you the edge association you can see i associated vpc a related vpc a related internet gateway to this to this route table so whenever the request came to this came through this internet gateway to this vpc a 
then that will be trigger to this route table so from here where the request will send to where the request sending is allowed the request sending to this ip address or this ip address is allowed that is this header block or this header block is allowed these two are nothing but our vpcs these two are nothing but our subnets which are present in our vpc these two are public subnets so th this is the public subnet present in my one year region and this i haven't shown you this is the public subnet that is present in 1b region so how my request will be routed so previously only i have told you in this architecture whenever the request enters into this then that will reaches to first the firstly that will trigger this route table that is a ingress route table since we associated internet gateway to this then through what it is allowing through this traffic what is this 097c1249 something is there if you observe that then that is the vp that is the end point that is the end point of our 1a availability zone so through this end point only through this end point only that request is routed to our public subnet this is the cider block address of our public subnet so even i can open and show you that subnet i am opening these subnets in another new tab and this is nothing but since we are discussing about uh, subnet uh, one so i am filtering based on subnet one you can see this is the public subnet you can see the cider range of this public subnet ip cider range of this public subnet so this is the public subnet this public subnet ip cider range is 10.1.1.0 forward slash 24 i just copying this this is the public subnet right yeah so this ip range is this 10.1.1.0 forward slash 24 you can see from here through this through this network firewall generated through this network firewall generated end point only we are allowing the traffic to this ip address you can see that from the route table from this ingress route table you can analyze that through which target we are allowing through this this is nothing but the end point that is generated while we are creating this firewall that is this so through this target what we are doing we are allowing whatever the request that is coming through this internet gateway to where to this destination that is a 10.1.1.0 forward slash 24 that is nothing but this public subnet so from internet it moves the request to it moves the request to a route table through that the request will be sent to here so from here obviously through the nat gateway the request will be sent to here and it will send back the response so in between so whenever it the traffic triggers this network firewall related end points this network firewall will execute this firewall policy settings in this you have rules right these all will be validated at this moment of time now to make it some more clear i want to show you the route table of this firewall public subnet and this public subnet where my nat gateway is and private subnet related route table also i want to show you so i'm opening the route tables you can see i'm searching for what yeah i want that public subnet related right yeah so you can see now i want a vpc one related route tables that is vpc a related route tables so those are these and table 1 table 2 basically this table 1 indicates our first availability zone related tables and whereas that table 2 related routes indicates the second availability zone related routes 
now i want to show you those now you can see the ingress route you have seen through this the request is entered and send it to our subnet what subnet to this firewall to this firewall public subnet i want to show you that firewall related route table as well so where is the firewall related route table yeah you can see this is that table one firewall related route table if you see the routes it is allowing all the traffic it is allowing all the traffic that is it is allowing traffic through the internet gateway to all the destinations to all the destinations it is allowing the traffic from internet what this firewall route table okay so after validating the request then that request will be sent to this route table this route table will send the request to backend that is uh, to this private subnet since uh, here we allowed the route right here we allowed the all routes which are coming to the subnets to what are the destination that it is going then let's open that private subnet the, let's open that public subnet this is the public subnet right yeah so let's open this public subnet related route table that route table is this this is the route table that is associated now if you see through this endpoint only this is nothing but what is this endpoint this endpoint is nothing but our firewall related endpoint our network firewall related generated endpoint through this firewall related generated endpoint only the request will be routed to anywhere so whenever the request reaches to this public subnet it will allow it will allow all the traffic that is coming from the target that is network firewall endpoint so what are the traffic coming through this network firewall endpoint those all traffic will be allowed to all the destination points in this public subnet you can see that route is available here and local route that is provided in order to provide internal communication to your vpc so that's natural one that's the default natural one that we obviously put so through this we are allowing through this endpoint we are allowing the traffic that is coming from internet to every destination point that is so whenever the traffic came that first reaches to here and through this NAT gateway to where the traffic will be sent to this private uh, subnet right so let's open this private subnet and validate the route table of it as well now i'm opening the private subnet related route table this is that here we are allowing only the traffic which is coming from the nat gateway to all the destinations so whatever the traffic that is coming from this nat gateway only that is allowed to this private subnet other all traffic will be denied by default now you can see and we we allowed the local traffic in order to provide the local communication in your network so how our request will be transmitted so first our request will be sent to this internet gateway this internet gateway will trigger will trigger to our ingress traffic rules route table then that will send the traffic to this public subnet this public subnet will send the traffic to our network firewall our network of firewall related endpoints then through that firewall related endpoints actually our traffic will be validated based on the rules that we provided here and after validating that request will reach us to where to this public subnet through that through that endpoints network firewall that is a network firewall endpoints our request will be again reached to this public subnet if all are validated and that traffic is allowed then the traffic will be sent to this NAT gateway through that the request will be sent to this ec2 instance and we got the response now now here in this NAT gateway firewall whatever you created here you are allowed to provide the rules that you want to validate 
here you are allowed to provide the rules that you want to validate let's say i identified a traffic that is coming from port 443 where that is not a tls port basically actually the traffic that is coming through 443 must be tls type protocol it need to in order to communicate with my servers i allowed only tls port protocol where if any traffic coming through the port that is 443 but some traffics which are not which are not tls protocol but they are coming through 443 port those traffic i want to stop so how to stop those type of traffic sir so in order to stop them you need to add a rule inside your firewall inside your network firewall now we successfully set up all these environment and whenever the request came that will obviously pass through this network firewall end points so whenever the request pass through the network firewall end points that traffic will be validated if that traffic is allowed then only that will be sent so how it will be validated based on the rules that we provide here so now here i want to provide a rule in order to stop unsecured traffic that is coming through 443 protocol but not using tls protocol it is coming through whatever the traffic that is coming to through port number 443 but not through the protocol that is tls that is unsecure traffic that i want to block at this network firewall level so how to do that so in order to do that you have to add a stateful rule group here you need to add a stateful rule group here you can you can create that stateful rule group directly from these options you can see network firewall rule groups you just click on it to create your stateful rule group here then you can associate that rule group to this firewall that you created now i'm clicking on create a rule group i'm just creating a new rule group in order to stop that particular traffic you can see we have two options that is the rule group type either the rule group is stateful or stateless so when do we say our rule group is a stateful and when do we say our rule group is stateless if you want to inspect packet if you want to inspect packet within the traffic then it's a stateful let's say if you want to inspect the packet which is already stored in your own infrastructure or in your storage it's not from traffic flow then we can say it's a stateless type of rule currently i want to validate the traffic flow the current traffic flow packet so that's why i'm using this stateful rule and we need to provide the format either the format is standard or domain list or this surikata compatible rule string you can use this whenever if you want to provide your own syntax in order to filter or in order to validate the traffic or else you can use this domain list in order to validate the traffic coming from a list of domain names otherwise you can use this if you want to restrict a, or you want to validate the traffic coming from particular source or destination ip address ports or protocols so since i want to provide the syntax for my rule i'm selecting this and you can see the rule evaluation order do you want to use strict order then choose this or you want to choose this action based order then choose this currently i want to use action based order so that's why i choose this option and i'm moving on a next here you need to provide your rule group name let's say this is the rule 1 so you can provide based on the rule group name you you can 
and here you need to provide the capacity so based on the capacity it will your rule group will be validated so based on the capacity that you provide in that order your rule group will be validated currently i am providing 10 as the capacity and i am clicking on next previously we provided rule group type rule group as well as uh, yeah now we need to provide the configuration rules in order to validate here i have multiple options and here you can see the rule related string you can able to provide here now i have already i want to do i want to identify which which type of uh, traffic that is a port number 443 right so that is a tcp type traffic that's a tcp type traffic so whenever that type of a traffic uh, hits i want to generate i want to generate an alert i want to generate an alert from any source either the traffic may be received from any source and any destination through any this 443 protocol i want to monitor those type of all requests so whatever the request that is coming through this 443 protocol by using this tcp then i want to monitor all those either it may coming from any source or destination and i want to check that i want to check that and provide a message so let's say that that is a not a good traffic that is a i want to restrict that unsecure traffic so i want to provide the message as output to that as unsecure traffic unsecure traffic over 443 not tls not tls traffic so like that i want to provide the message and so whenever whenever i got that whenever i got that request i need to check that it's a tls type or not to check that you have a important component that is app layer app layer protocol here you need to check whether that is not a tls if that request is not a tls then only i'll confirm that it's a unsecure it's a unsecure traffic since it's coming from 443 port it need to be tls but if it's not a tls then i confirm that it's a unsecure traffic so let's say if the traffic is secure let's say if the traffic is secure that is established traffic is secure let's say let's say the established traffic is established traffic is secure then what i will do i will flow the traffic to the server right so that also i am providing here the detail and if it's not a tls type protocol then obviously i will send this message and stop that request let's say we, we need to provide a unique sid and we also need to provide a unique and a revision number also we need to provide so i am providing a revision number as one and s not id as this and here one more thing that the protocol that we are using is in small letters if you provide in capital letters we might get an error yeah that's it we need to must follow the syntax rules so that we don't get errors while writing this rules now i'm just clicking on next and i'm moving on with the default option for this uh, advanced uh, configuration settings and clicking on next currently i don't want to add any tag so that's why i'm clicking on next here you can see we can able to review and we can able to create that rule so that's it i'm just uh, creating this rule where this rule name is this 
and in this i provided a rule where it can able to identify the traffic which is coming from any source and any destination moving to any destination through this tcp protocol on this port which is not coming by using this tls protocol then i am making a message that is this is a unsecured traffic over 443 it's not a tls traffic and i am stopping those requests through this rule otherwise if the if it is a not like that then i am establishing the connection to the server and i provided a unique sid s not id and rev number and now i am just clicking on create this rule group so that this rule group will create you can see you have successfully created rule group rule 1 you can see yeah that is created successfully now we just created the rule group we haven't attached that rule group to our firewall network firewall now i want to attach this rule group to our firewall so that's why i'm opening the rule firewall my firewall that is this and here i need to attach that here i need to attach that now under the firewall policy settings we have these stateful related rule groups so there you can have an option that is actions in this you can able to add the rule groups as well now you can see we have an option that is add unmanaged stateful rule groups now i want to add my rule one that i have created so that is why i am clicking on it so you can see that is visible here i'm selecting this and i'm adding that rule group so whenever i added this whenever i added this if you see if you see that rule group is added to this rules right yeah so that rule group also added under the monitoring section under the monitoring section you can able to identify the traffic you can see this is how the traffic you can able to monitor the traffic as well now i am just reloading this yeah now where my actual logs are stored so in order to see whether this rule group is stopping the requests that are coming through 443 protocol and those are not using tls protocol Through four forty three port, whatever the request traffic is coming, that is not through TLS protocol. Those need to be stopped or blocked by using this firewall rule group. That is a rule one that I have created. Now I want to validate that whether it is clearly stopping or not. So in order to check that, you can open CloudWatch because there only right we are storing our data. Yeah. you can see under this yeah you can see under this cloud watch log group we are storing our data alerts related data so that's why i'm opening cloud watch to validate whether this can able to stop or not now i'm opening the cloud watch so not only alerting you can also block those requests that is you can also drop those requests as well so based on your need you can also able to drop those requests i'll also show you how to drop the requests as well i am opening currently log groups in order to show you the alerts which are generated i have already sent some traffic to that now i am opening this alert related group and you can see i have multiple log groups are there so this is the today's so what is today's yeah so this is the latest one that i am opening latest log stream i am opening in this log stream if you observe so let's open the latest one that is this yeah currently you can see un unsecured traffic over 443 you can see that is observed 
now we just generated alert messages we haven't dropped those traffic we just generated that alert message you can see that alert message is generated or not yeah so that alert message is generated so whenever what are the port that we provide that is a tcp port we provide that is a, the port we provide that is a 443 through this port whatever the request coming that is not tls request so that's why what i'm doing i'm generating a alert message what is that it's a unsecure traffic like that i generated just a alert message now i want a rule sir in order to drop such a type of request so in order to drop such type of request i need a rule group again i need a rule group sir i want to attach that to my firewall how to do that now let us see that as well i'm moving back to my firewall where that is present in my vpc dashboard here i want to create one more rule group so that's why i'm opening a network of firewall rule groups now we simply drop so in order to drop it's a very similar syntax to the previous that we created for rule one now we create a rule two in order to drop those now you can see it's a stateful rule and we are selecting this so similar to previously we are selecting the action action order and i'm just clicking on next here i'm providing the rule name that is a rule two and here we need to provide again the capacity and we need to click on a next here i am providing the same rule that i previously provided you can see this is the same request that i have previously provided we just return we just return an alert and tcp protocol from anywhere but if the port is this then it will monitor whether the application layer protocol is a tls or not if that is tls we are establishing the connection and moving the request forward to the server or else we are generating this message. But what I am expecting now, and we, we are even generating a alert, whether it is not a TLS type, then we are generating the alert. So, but so whenever it is not a TLS, it is not a TLS protocol, then I want to drop this. Then I want to drop that particular traffic. So that's why I'm writing a drop here in this rule. That's it. Nothing more changes. I'm just clicking on next. Now I, again, I'm clicking on next, moving on with the default configurations. Here we just provided the rule name and we move on with the default previous configurations that we provided and we are dropping whatever the traffic that is coming with 443 port, but not TLS protocol, but it is not using TLS protocol. Those traffic only we are dropping and that's it. I'm creating this a group. So I'm just clicking on create this rule group. You can see that rule group also. Yeah, your rule group that is a rule two was created successfully. So yeah, I think it might take Yeah. Now you can see our rule two also created. Now simple, I want to attach this rule group to our firewall. So that's why I'm opening this firewall. Now I'm opening this firewall. And I want to attach that rule group to this firewall in order to block those type of requests. So that's why I'm moving on to this stateful rule groups. Here I'm again moving under the actions tab similar to the previous. And I'm expecting to add right the unmanaged stateful rule group that I've defined. So that's why I'm clicking on add unmanaged stateful rule group this is that so that's why i'm selecting this and clicking on add the stateful rule group if you observe if you observe that that will be added into our firewall policy settings related stateful rule groups that is this you can see now we actually added that rule group to here so now whatever the request that is coming through 443 protocol, but not through TLS protocol. 
through 443 port but not using TLS protocol, those all requests will be dropped. You can monitor the results under again again under cloud watch. Again under cloud watch, you can able to monitor those results. So like this, you can able to do you can able to configure this. That is, you can able to secure your network traffic by restricting only specific unsecure traffic by using VPC related network firewall. So there you can create your own rules and you can able to block or restrict or drop certain traffic that is unsecure. If you feel that traffic is unsecure, those you can able to drop or you can even generate the alert messages as well. Now here in the cloud watch, you can able to monitor that as well. You can able to monitor the matrices. So like that, you can able to control the traffic and restrict the specific traffic by using a VPC network firewall related rule groups. By creating your own rule groups, you can able to do that. So I hope you understood this video and you got a knowledge on real time hands on of using network firewall in order to restrict or stop the traffic that you are not expecting. This network firewall now acts as a network security. That is, it can secure your network in this way. By defining your own rules, you can able to secure your network in this way. I hope you understood this video and you got a knowledge regarding network firewall rules creation, rule group creation and attaching that rule group to the network firewall. And you have also understood the configurations that are required to use this network firewall and the network firewall related endpoint concept also I hope you understood. So I hope this video is useful to you and this hands-on lab will be useful to you in order to use a network firewall in order to secure your whole network. Thanks for watching again. See you back in the next video with another interesting topic. Until then, bye-bye guys.